All right, so now we're gonna we're gonna keep the billable item as is. I'm not gonna change that one. I'm gonna imagine that this one we think it's gonna go up. Now there's a couple general trends that you might use, which are the easiest things to think about. You might say, well, I think the income is gonna go up by a percentage each time frame. So that's one one kind of easy thing to put the data input on. Or you might think that that there's gonna be an increase based on based on uh, a step, like after three months, you think it's gonna jump up for whatever reason, or you might have a system where it goes up by a certain dollar amount. Those are the easiest ones to kind of increase by. So for whatever reason, we're gonna say that we think from January to February and going out into the future, this revenue account is gonna increase by 5%. So how can I calculate that? I could say 1130 times uh, 0.05, 5%. That would be it goes up by 5650 plus the 1130 or i could say i want to have 0.05 plus 1 1.05 or 105 percent times the 1130 that gets us where we want to go so let's do that i'm going to double click on february here on february and i'm going to say this equals the prior amount times the uh, 1.05, 105%, 100% plus 5% in essence, right? And so I'm going to say boom. So now that brings it up to the 1187. And then I can copy that all the way across and it should nicely populate uh, increase. And notice if I don't do that, because I, ha I said equal the prior cell, it now takes the new amount instead of, instead of taking the original divided by two. Instead of taking this original amount, it's always going to be taking the new amount but I want it to continually compounding the increase. So I'm gonna put my cursor on it, fill handle and drag it all the way to the right. And that will then, not to the total, but to the December. And now the total totals up to the 17,986. All right, let's do the next one. And, and notice these are gonna be the more difficult ones because the revenue is often the things that we're gonna, we're gonna think are gonna change based on what we're gonna do. Possibly we're gonna advertise more. Possibly we're gonna buy more equipment you know we're gonna have to make our projections possibly the business environment will change and then the expenses a lot of times some of them will be more fixed so we can just basically keep the standard whatever it is all the way across utilities will just be pretty much the same all the way across all the, unless we have a seasonal kind of thing going on there so in any case we're gonna we're gonna say this one's gonna increase by 10 percent each time so we'll do the same thing i'll double click on this i'm gonna say the prior thing times the 1.1 1. 1, 1 100% plus 10%, right? 10% and then enter. And so then now it's, it steps up for the rest of the time frame. I'm gonna put my cursor back on it and copy it all the way to the right. So it, it compounds on itself to get to the, to the 624. So we're looking a lot better next year. Now let's do something a little bit different. Instead of it compounding like that, we might say maybe I'm gonna do something saying it's gonna increase starting in February by $1,000. So we think it's just gonna increase by a set dollar amount instead of compounding, compounding on itself. So I'm gonna double click on this and say, I'm gonna take the prior amount plus $1,000. So we'll just increase it by 1,000. Now it has stepped up to 1,000 because each cell represents the prior one. And now I'm just gonna copy that one across. So each time it'll just increase by $1,000. So another kind of fairly easy arithmetic type of thing to do all right so let's go back on over and then say okay the next one is cost of goods sold now cost of goods sold is generally going to be tied to have this have a profit margin a relationship to the sale of products because it's 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 this cost of the goods that we're selling so we're going to have this so if this one is going up by 10 percent you would think there'd be something similar happening down here so in other words i could say okay well the cost of goods sold if i look at february is is uh two two nine seven seven divided by the three two one four eight which is here and say the cost of goods sold is like 0.737 percent of the of the sales so i could use that formula i could say this equals i could say this equals this times 0.73767 or whatever and copy that across, that's that's one way we could do it. Uh, or I can just say it's gonna increase by 
that same 1.1, which should end up with the same result. And this should be a negative. I'd have to say negative of that amount times whatever. Or I could say this is going to be equal to the prior amount times 1.1. It's going to have that percentage increase, which is going to be the same uh, across. So, so we'll do that. And so now, this, so, so if I do that, this is at the 25275 divided by the 32148. So now we're at 0 0.7862. And if I copy that across, all the way across to December, and I, and I do the division here, I could say, okay, this is at 65556 divided by this number 83384. And we got the 0.786, right? Okay, so and then the totals at the 491. Now, some of the expense accounts should be a little bit easier down here. So if I look at some of those, I'm going to say, all right, let's go down here. We got the bank. The bank fees, $30, $35. Let's say that's the same all the way across. It's probably in material, not really worth getting too bothered over in a budget. The, the liability insurance. Now, insurance... You kind of got to think if you're going to be doing a cash based system or an, an accrual based system i'm going to try to try to just show when we're going to pay the insurance uh, at this point just so you can see how you might see it like a, a tier uh, type of system so i might say i'm going to record the insurance as an expense when i pay for it for example and and look at it more on a cash flow basis and say let's delete all of this and i'm just going to assume that i'm going to pay the insurance in february let's say $6,000 in February, negative $6,000. And then I'm going to pay again in September, negative 6,000. So you might have something like that if you're trying to do your budget kind of on a cash based system. And you might have like a step up situation that we'll see shortly. Like, like, let's say that the internet for the business, let's say that's going to be pretty much standard. We'll keep that as is. Then we've got our wages situation, the taxes, this is payroll taxes, I believe and then the wages. So this is, a, is an area you might have a step up kind of situation. You might say, well, I'm going to pay the same wages, but maybe in June, that's when I'm due to give people raises for cost of living or whatever, uh, raises or something. So you might say, I'm going to keep this as is until June maybe. And then you have that step up where I'm going to say it's going to be the prior amount times 110%, 10% increase. So I'm going to say times 1.1. 10 110%, increasing it by 10%. And now you've got this, this step up that happened. And maybe you don't expect that to be compounding going forward because that's how wages often work. They're tiered up at one point and then they stay, they stay standard uh, for some time after that, uh, unlike possibly revenue, which hopefully has a nice steady flow uh, increase upwards. Let me tweak that one a little bit. I think I wanted to do the step up in July so let's say I'm going to copy this June. I'm going to copy from May back over to June. And then I'm going to do in July that step up thing. So I'm going to say July is going to equal the prior period times 1.1. So now in July going, going forward, you'll have that amount uh, out to here, 87. So that looks good. Now, then we've got the sales tax, the payroll tax. So if there's a change to payroll, you would expect payroll taxes to change, which gets complex because the payroll taxes can have different caps on them and whatnot. And so there's a couple of ways you can think about it. It'd be similar to like the cost of goods sold relationship to the to the inventory, because this is basically our portion, the employer portion of taxes. So you could you might think of it as it should have the same relationship that it did before. So I could say, well, taxes were 486 divided by wages of 6983 so that's about 6.6 6 uh, 6.95% so i could go here and take and say this is going to be this times so i right i could say this is going to be equal this times the 0 0.0695 or something like that or i could just increase it by the same amount which should give me basically the same result so i could say this is going to be equal to the prior period times 1.1 and i should have the same kind of jump up so if i then say this is 535 divided by 7682 
we get the 0 0.069, so on and so forth. So the taxes should jump up in a similar fashion, and that would make sense. Okay.